This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Welcome, everybody. And uh going to have to get a fresh cup of uh, coffee. So uh, let's pause this, and I'll be right back. All right, I am back, and I got my double shot of Nespresso. It is Sunday, May 17th. It's uh, raining outside, which is fantastic. I love the rain. I love to work. In the rain, I have my door open so I can let that cool, clean air uh, waft over me. Waft. You don't often get to use the word waft. I'm using it right now. All right. So thank you for joining me today. Great to have you here. I'm going to give you so much good information today. You're just not going to know what to do with yourself. And our topic is government benefits, which I have somehow become an expert at because I've been doing my research and I've been making a ton of videos and I've been going through the process myself. So I'm going to talk today about PPP. I'm going to tell you why I canceled my application. I'm going to talk about PUA, unemployment insurance, some things I've learned there. I'm going to talk about what happens if you get both. What what would you do at that point? And then I'm going to talk about going back to work and how things have changed for us, the drivers. I don't know if you can hear a difference in my voice. I'm using a new microphone. It's an Audio-Technica ATR2100X. And uh, I'm loving it. It's actually really great. I got to say, I uh, it's uh, nice to hear my voice clearer um, when I listen to, to it play back. So I'm pretty happy about that. All right, so let's get into this. PPP. So I applied for a PPP, Paycheck Protection Program loan, uh, over a month ago. And then at the time I applied... Um, I was able to apply with just uh, 1099s, some bank statements, and a payroll ledger. And I was uh, tentatively approved, 
And uh, I was just, uh, I even signed the uh, loan documents and sent them a voided check so that they could deposit the $20,000 into my bank account. Then I started to see all these stories about forgiveness and how does one get their PPP loan forgiven? And they've changed the rules. This thing keeps morphing. So I initially thought, well, I just got to pay myself $20,000 and I'll be 100% forgiven. Well, that's not the case. The only way you're going to get money forgiven is based on your 2019 tax return, your Schedule C, line 31. That's in the new rules. Well, if you're a driver, you and you and I both know that your Schedule C, line 31, is going to be pretty low. You know, unless unless you've not listened to any of my videos and uh, and you've just uh, totally missed the boat on your tax return, you shouldn't be paying much in taxes because we get such a generous mileage deduction. That on top of the fees that Uber and Lyft take away, plus other expenses, things we get for our cars, things we might do on the internet. I mean, it was like nothing. So when I looked at what I could actually get forgiven, it was like a fraction of what I was uh, borrowing. So basically it was a loan. It would have been a loan for $20,000, which I don't need. I didn't want that. So I've, I verified this with the underwriter. And sure enough, you know, he said, you're right. They have changed the rules. And I said, okay, then I am withdrawing my application. I do not want the PPP loan. So if you, um, if you did get a PPP loan and uh, you're then calculating your how much you can actually get forgiven, and it's a lot less. Um, I think you have until the 18th, which would be tomorrow, which means you would have already, that date would have already passed by the time you've heard this. But um, you can, you can um, have the funds returned, you know. All right, so that's it on the PPP loan. Um, yeah, they, they've changed the rules. So I said, no, I don't want the PPP loan. Okay, the PUA. Well, since the last time I uh, talked to you, I have received my uh, debit card, my Bank of America debit card. And when I got the card, my balance was $5,930. No, yeah, $930, $5,930. So I thought, well, this is great. So I, you know, got the card, I got online and got my car initiated and and uh, figured out how to transfer funds. And turns out you can only transfer $5,000 per week. So, <laughs> so I transferred 5,000 the first day thinking, well, the 5,000 must be a daily limit. Tried the next day to send the $930, no. The next day I tried again, no. Finally, I called the number on the back of the card and they said, no, it's 5,000 every week. So, that means, uh, let's see, next to, uh, Tuesday. On Tuesday, I could transfer the rest of it. So, so that's pretty great. That's actually the first substantial money that I have received as a result of all this government um, help. So let's see. I got the money last week on Monday, the 11th. All right. So I stopped working February 3rd to March, to April, to May. So almost three and a half months later. I finally got some significant government money. Now, the amount that everybody is getting is 167, this is in California, is $167 per week. And we're supposed to be able to get that money ratcheted up to $450 a week. So that's a significant amount of money. And as I was looking um as I was looking at uh, the EDD website, you find this valuable piece of information and said, um, once we are able to complete further programming, we will be able to increase the benefit amount to a maximum of 450 per week if you earned more than 17,368 in 2019. This page will be updated with instructions for reporting additional wages for higher weekly payments. 
And then I read in an article that that date is going to be May 20th, which is uh, in a few days on a Wednesday. So most of us um, have 1099s that show we earned more than um, $18,000. Now, I'm not clear if they also are going to uh, need us to report uh, line, uh, you know, Schedule C, line 31, or if they're just going to be happy with 1099s. Uh, my sense is they're going to be just happy with 1099s, but um, we don't have all that information just yet. But if you can imagine, um, I did the math. Um, if you take $450 minus the 167, it's close to $300 a week. And I'm 13 weeks into this. So that's like another $4,000, right? Um, so that's a lot of money. And going forward, that's an extra 300 or so dollars every single week. So you definitely want to, once you're able to, um, verify your earnings for 2019 so that you can get your weekly amount increased. Because then instead of getting 767 a week, you're going to be getting 1050 That's a big difference. And it really adds up over time. So that's happening on May 20th. Now... While I was um, speaking to the gentleman about my PPP loan, I said, well, the other thing that's happened to me is I'm getting uh, PUA funds now. He says, well, you can't get both. And I said, tell me more about that. He goes, well, you just have to stop getting your unemployment for two and a half months while you've got your PPP money because your PPP money is for two and a half months. So just uh, just don't don't certify that you're looking for work. Tell them you, you found some work. Um, you're, you know, you've got funds coming in from a different source and don't double dip because if you do double dip, um, you're going to, you could get in trouble. Now I heard, um, Harry talking to an, to a, uh, a financial guy on the YouTube, uh, live and I, you know, he said, you know, I don't know if they're going to catch you or not. And that may be true, but I just think for your own integrity, um, and, and you just don't want to be looking over your shoulder and worrying about it. And what if they do catch you? And what if there's a fine all of a sudden? I mean, it's just way, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the big benefit to it. I mean, if you got the PPP loan, you're probably getting a lot more than you were getting for unemployment insurance. So be happy you got that and let it, uh, let it go for the two and a half months. And then you can start, um, unemployment again. Okay. Now that brings us to the final topic here, which is, going back to driving. Have you thought about that? So the rideshare guy did a survey and 37% of drivers are still driving. That means 63% of us are not driving anymore. When will you feel safe enough to go back to the open road? That's a, that's a really good question. And when you're getting this unemployment money, is it worth it for you? to go out and risk your health, risk getting into an accident, putting wear and tear on your car, paying for gas, taking 40 you know hours a week of your time. Is it worth it? I don't know. That's a question everyone's got to answer for themselves. But when you do go back, things are going to be different. This week I did a, uh, a video and an article on the new safety policies that both Uber and Lyft have instituted that start tomorrow, May 18th. So by the time you hear this, these policies are in play. And they are that you have to wear a mask. So if you're gonna drive, you have to wear a mask and the passenger has to wear a mask. You can drive up and see a passenger and if they don't have a mask, you can just cancel right there, put reason, passenger has no mask, and get your $5 cancellation fee. But you got to ask yourself, is that is that a ride you want to cancel? If it's a short ride, sure, cancel it. But if it's a long ride, let's say it's, uh, you know, you go into the airport, you know, and you, you're going to make uh, 20 to $30 on the ride, you don't want to cancel that ride. So what I recommend what I recommended in the video, if you happen to see it, was go to Walmart, Target, wherever, and get some supplies. And the main things you want to get are some masks, hand sanitizer or wipes, and I would get some gloves. 
you know, just get some gloves so you can just wear gloves. They're not, they're not expensive. I went to Walmart and I got a whole box of like a hundred of them for like seven or $8. Um, they're actually in the pharmacy. Um, and I had to ask the pharmacist and the pharmacist had them uh, behind the glass. So that was pretty great. So you're going to have to wear a mask. Okay. And your passenger is going to have to wear a mask. And uh, you're going to have to go through a, uh, if you're driving for Uber, you're going to have to go through a selfie check, the real ID, where you got to look in the look in your phone, smile, click, and then they, they verify that you do have a mask on. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to go online. So that's something you're going to have to do each day before your shift. Now, there's no way for them to check that you take, you know, if you take it off after you start driving. But then again, why would you? You know, mask is probably a good thing. Uber, thus far, is the only company that said that you cannot have passengers in your front seat. So gone are the days of somebody jumping in your car in the front seat and you having a lively chat because you can't do that. Now, there's no way that they can check, but they're letting the passengers know that they should not get into the front seat. And uh, this rule, I think, is a little bit silly. Because if somebody's uh, sitting in the front seat, they're three feet away from you. If they're in the back seat, they might be four feet away from you. I mean, you're in a box, a metal box together, breathing the same air. Whether you're three feet apart or four feet apart, I don't see that makes a big difference. I always liked passengers that got in the front seat. When I'm a passenger, I would always get in the front seat to talk shop with other drivers. So that's the new normal. That's the new normal. So you got to have your masks on. If you're with Uber, you can't have somebody sitting in the front seat. And that's uh, that's where we're at. So what you going to do? Are you going to embrace the new normal and get back out there and drive? Are you going to drive enough that you make $1,050 each week, free and clear? Or are you going to stay home and uh, just collect your unemployment, work on uh, something else? Maybe you got some kind of under the table kind of a work you can do and uh, make even more money. Maybe it's time to work on your plan B. Maybe it's time to make your plan B into your plan A. We have a lot of options all of a sudden. I don't think uh, I don't think anyone's going to tell you you have to drive when there's definitely a risk. Anytime you're going to be in a car and you're going to have 15 to 20 people a day coming in and out of your car, you're at risk. I don't care if you have masks on. I don't care if you have those uh, plastic shields over your face. I don't care if you're in, uh, you know, if you have dividers between the front and the back seat, uh, you're still running a risk. And if you're in my situation where I have an 81 year old, so if you're, you have somebody in your house who's in a high risk category, um, that's a risk you just don't want to take, you know, especially when you're getting $1,050 um, put into your bank account every single week. That's a pretty sweet deal. So. It'll be interesting to see who says, yeah, I got to get out there back on the road. I'm, I'm willing to take the risk. I'm willing to put on a mask. I'm willing to not have somebody sit in the front seat. I'm willing to drive people around. Everyone's going to make their own decision, um, but it certainly is not a clear-cut choice. That I will say for sure. All right. Good, good, good. That is all right for now. That's a wrap. So fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it out there every day. I honor you. Whatever you're doing, whether you're driving, whether you're at home working on your plan B, whether you're just kicking back, eating healthy food and working out, um, or whether you're going through a major depression and you're just like checked out, hey, everything's good. Everything's good. And uh, we're going to get through this. Uh, the new normal is the new normal. And uh, at some point, it'll just be seem like that's normal and uh, everything's going to be okay. So thanks again for joining me. This is Jay Crater, also known as Nomad Jay. I love to travel. This episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. 
be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.